Thank you. Uh, look, could you have a word with Mrs. Collins? Uh, she's wearing the uh, the blue apron there. She was actually working on the till when the two-year-old was snatched. Right. Where's the mother? Uh, Mrs. Kelly. Polly's just taken her inside. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right, Darren. Can you tell me what you saw? Right. I was coming out of Town Street and I saw a woman stood near a pram. Right. What was she doing? I thought she was just looking at the baby. Okay. What happened then? Next time I looked, she was getting into a car. What kind of car was it? For the Ryan. Green. Right, did you get a good look at the index number, like the registration number there? I think it was a D reg. It had, you know, one of those little Chelsea strips in the back window. I only remember because they're crap. Yeah, right. Uh, thanks, Darren. If you could just wait here for me. All units from 218. Uh, this is really the abduction on Maydell Street. Attention is requested to a green Ford Orion, first digit Delta. Vehicle has a Chelsea football strip in the rear window, last seen heading into Water Street. Over. Thank you. There you go. Look, is there anyone you'd like me to contact? Yeah, Ian, my husband. Would you know where he'll be, Mrs Kelly? Um, he'll be at work today. Beckworth Logistics, Ockham Street off Harless Lane. Right. We'll let him know. So do you know what happened? Yeah, she left her daughter Gemma outside while she got a newspaper. When she went back out, Gemma was gone. No sign of any suspects? No, Sarge, but she did have this in her purse. It was taken a couple of months ago on Gemma's second birthday. And what was the child wearing? Lilac dungarees and a purple multicoloured jacket. OK, Polly, we'll keep Mrs Kelly here, in case Gemma shows up. If not, we'll take her home. In the meanwhile, I want you to stay here till it's concluded, OK? Yeah. Mrs Kelly? Yes. Sergeant Crow. I just wanted to say that everything possible is being done to locate Gemma. <laughs> Who'd want to do a thing like this? All units from Sierra Oscar, read child abduction. We have a deregistered green Ford Orion reported obstructing a drive on Ida Lane. The Sierra Oscar from Sierra One. We're not too far away from Ida Lane now, Sarge. Can you show us dealing? Received. Informant is a Frank Brown. He's at number 12, Gary. Uh, down here, down here. Well done. Well done. So there he is. Pillocks have blocked me in. Two of them. Just dumped the car and then legged it. How long ago was this? About five minutes. Bingo. This is Sierra Oscar from 358 receiving. Go ahead, Gary. Read that obstruction on Ida Lane, Sarge. There's no sign of the missing child, but it looks like we've found the Orion. Got an index, Gary. Index number. You said there were two occupants. Delta Can you describe them to me? Yeah. A couple of joyriders. Man and a woman. Late teens, early twenties. Man had a ponytail. Girl, skinny, dark hair. And which way did they run off? Up onto the waste ground. Was either of them carrying anything? I don't know. Only saw them from behind. You like having a crackdown? Sorry? We don't use the arrives so quick for a stolen motor. Thanks. So, so far, the abduction looks like it was well planned. Mother calls at the news agents twice a week on her way to the toddlers group in Shadwell Street, always at the same time, between half past nine, quarter to ten. Now, that suggests whoever did this spent time watching her, where she'd be and at what time. What have we got on the car, Gov? The car was reported stolen from the Riverside Flats by the owner, Mr Platt. He reckons it disappeared between midnight and 1am. Now, the theory is they couldn't risk driving a stolen vehicle, so they dumped it and headed for the waste ground. Why would they do that? Well, because it makes it that much more difficult for us to trace them. They get onto the waste ground. There's only one of three directions they can go in. Gary and Steve are checking it out. Someone's car is getting through a lot of oil. Looks quite fresh as well. Yeah. If that's not just for show, we may have something on tape. How are they, Polly? Mrs Kelly's been sedated, Gov. She's upstairs. Her husband's just arrived. He's through there. Have you had a chance to talk to him yet? Well, he's still in shock. He said he wants to be on his own. Mr 
Mr. Kelly. I'm Detective Chief Inspector Meadows. This is WPC Blake. Any news? I'm afraid not. I, I realise this is a distressing time for you, but I was wondering if you'd be up to answering a few questions. I know who's behind this. Her name's Laura. Evans, I think. So what makes you say that? Because this is the kind of vindictive thing she'd do. What do you mean, Mr. Kelly? Gemma's adopted. Laura's the mother. <laughs> She's the one that gave birth. So how long ago was the adoption? Two years. Gemma's been with us more or less since she was born. And why do you think Laura's taken Gemma? Because she fought like hell to keep her. I see. She found out where we live. After the adoption, she turned up. Demanded Gemma back. <laughs> Tried to reason with her, but... Well, she was out of control. So I sent her packing. And did she bother you again? She wouldn't come round to the house. She knew what sort of welcome she'd get. Which is when the letters started. What kind of letters? The poison pen variety. <laughs> Laura was only 16, but she had a right mouth on her. Said me and Alex were frauds. Accused us of using her kid to play happy families. And were any of these letters threatening? Yeah. She said one way or another she was going to get Gemma back. If you were being harassed, why didn't you inform the police? Well, I didn't take it seriously. Mrs Kelly didn't mention Laura. It's because she wasn't in when Laura came round. And I didn't tell her. It was me that threw Laura out. I got the letters. And what with fertility treatment, then adoption, I thought Alex had been through enough. Do you have the letters here? No, they didn't warrant a second read. And when did they stop coming? Gemma's first birthday. I was expecting a card or something, but nothing came. And your wife doesn't know any of this? No. But then, she doesn't even know I smoke. <laughs> I said I'd stop. Baby in the house and all that. You got kids? Two. Then you know what we're going through? No. But uh, I can guess. There's something reassuring in all this. I was wondering if I'd ever feel like a real dad. Do you know if Laura has a boyfriend? I don't know. You think somebody else could be involved? It's just a possibility at the moment. Have you any idea where Laura might be now? No. I've got a number for the adoption agents. I called them from work, but they refused to give me Laura's address. Well, that's understandable. Can you think of anyone else who might have done such a thing? No. This has got to be Laura's handiwork. Yeah, it is. I thought it were nicked. Prime dumping ground round here for stolen vehicles. Whether find them there or smouldering on that waste ground over there. Do you remember what colour it was? Red. Cavalier. There it goes. Right, can you rewind it? Yep. Right. Let's see what we got. Can you read that index, Gary? Mm, not really. Right, is that the departure time? Yep. Would you mind if we borrowed the tape? It's just that our lab might be able to enhance it. Not at all. Laura Evans? Yeah? WPC Blake, DCI Meadows. Could we have a word? What about? Could we come inside? It shouldn't take long. Can you tell us your whereabouts this morning? What's this about? Between 9 and 9.30. Well, why don't you guess? We've come to talk to you about your daughter. What? Gemma. Should have done your own work. She isn't mine anymore. We know that she was adopted two years ago. Well, then why bring it up? Something happened to her. How did you feel about the adoption? Well, what do you mean? Laura, we understand that you sent letters to Mr. Kelly, the adoptive father. Did you send letters demanding Gemma's return? Is that what he told you? Is it true? I don't remember. I was just a kid. It was only two years ago. Yeah, and I was 16. I understand you went round to the Kelly's house. Look, I'm getting on with my life because I have to. I don't need any of this thrown in my face now. We understand that, but we do need to ask. So how did you know the Kelly's address? Well, before Gemma was born, we had a getting to know you session down at the agency. For what reason? Look, if something's happened to Gemma, then I've got a right to know. We're investigating the abduction of a child. Now, your baby was taken this morning from outside a news agent's. Gemma? 
Well, what happened? We're still trying to establish that. You think it was me? You think I took her? You've got a nerve. Just try and stay calm. What, you think I've got her stuffed in a cupboard somewhere? Well, why don't you go and have a look around? And see what other skeletons you can drag up while you're at it. I don't believe this. So where were you this morning? I was in bed. Have you got somebody who can verify that? I was alone. Look, I think you should leave. Well, there's one or two more questions we'd like to ask you. No! I told you I was in bed all morning and I've got nothing to add. So if you don't mind... Don't make things difficult for yourself. I don't have to listen to this crap. This is my flat. Now get out. Laura! Just get out! Now just calm down. We can either do it here or at the station. We're not doing this anywhere. Very well, Laura Evans, I'm arresting you on suspicion of abduction. Why did you send letters to the Kellys? I felt cheated. Because they'd taken your child? Because they wouldn't let me see her. Did you resent the Kellys looking after Gemma? Well, I resented the decision. I felt sorry for him. Especially her. Mrs Kelly. I could see how much she wanted Gemma. But they were frauds, weren't they? Using your child to play at happy families. I mean, that's the way you saw it. No. Well, that's what you put in your letters to them. Well, I was angry. I was the one with the scar. I've been through hell with nothing to show for it. You had a caesarean? Yeah. They said the baby's heart was getting tired. Next thing I knew, I was being rushed somewhere. And I heard her scream. And when I woke up, she was gone. You had the Kelly's address. Did you ever go around there? Once. That must have been strange, seeing your child become a part of somebody else's family. Jim was in the kitchen with him. He was making a fuss over her. Mr Kelly. I don't think he was too happy about me hanging around his house. Did he tell you to leave? He said I could see Gemma if I promised to leave him alone. And did you see her? He took me into the kitchen and I held her. She was asleep. I wanted her to wake up, to look at me. But she just slept. He said he was sorry and I had to go. His wife was due back soon put his arm round me, told me not to cry, and that I could see her again. What did he mean by that? Every now and then he brought her round to the flat, just for a couple of minutes. Did his wife know about this? No. He said she wouldn't understand. Laura, did anything happen between you and Mr Kelly? Kissed me once. I was holding Gemma and he was stroking my hair. He said that we could help each other. I just pushed him away. Were you ever intimate with him? No. He was old enough to be my dad. But he carried on bringing Gemma around to your flat? Yeah. Did the visit stop? Yeah. When Gemma was about six months. Seeing her like that was killing me and it was confusing her, so I ended it. Do you think she's telling the truth about this relationship with Kelly? Well, we know he's good at keeping secrets. In which case, he's probably got a few more tricks up his sleeve. It's possible. What do you want to do with her, Gov? I'll get Tosh and Tom straight around to cover the flat. Then we'll release her. Make sure she's headed back there. And then see what our next move is. Sierra Roscoe from DC Proctor. Car check, please. Suspect vehicle at Bevan House. Go ahead. Mike. 961 Lima Uniform Charlie. Stand by. DC proper from Sierra Oscar. Read your car check, Tom. It should be a dark blue Mondeo. It's a company vehicle registered to a Beckworth Logistics in Ockham Street. All received. DC on Edison from DC Lines. Go ahead, Josh. Still no sign of Laura, but she's had a caller. IC1 male, early 40s. Suspect's driving a dark blue Mondeo. It's a company vehicle. Sounds like Mr Kelly, Josh. What's he up to? He's had no joy at Laura, so he's on the move, Gov. Received. I'll send Dave and Narika to cover the flat. You stick with him, Josh. Received. Let's go. You're right. The recording isn't brilliant. But if the information is there, we should be in business. Enlarge the index number, see what we've got.
Okay. Get rid of some of this. <laughs> Perfect. Well done. See how it's good from 363, Steve? Go ahead, Steve. Can you do a vehicle check? DC Line Meadows from DC Line. Go ahead, Josh. Mr. Kelly's on Talbot Street, Gov. He's turning towards his home address. Received. He's just pulled onto his drive. Right, you better get back to Lauder's flat now. On way. I don't know what the doctor gave her, but she's still out for the count. When Mr. Kelly left the house, you know where he went? He wanted to let his brother know what was going on. Was well, everything all right? Mr. Kelly, WPC Purge has been telling me you've been out to inform your brother. Yeah. Where does he live? Coal Lane Estate. Must have come as quite a shock. Yeah, it did. How did you take the news? <sighs> I couldn't believe it. Well, these things are difficult to take on board. Now, you work for uh, Beckworth Logistics. Yeah, is this relevant? The Mondeo outside. Is that a company car? Yes. Does anybody else have access to it? No. Do you know anybody who lives in Bevan House? Not that I'm aware of. What is this? Well, we were wondering what you were doing there this afternoon. My wife doesn't know about any of this. I'd like to keep it that way. Why have you been lying to us? Because I wanted to protect my marriage. I don't understand. I try to show Laura a bit of compassion. This is how she repays me. What arrangement did you make with Laura? What she told you? That you've been taking Gemma around to her flat. Is that true? I had to. Laura came around when Alex was out. She was desperate. She wasn't going to leave until she saw Gemma. Weren't you worried about your wife finding out? Yeah, well, obviously. Laura turned up in a right state. I, I just wanted to make things easier for her. So you've been taking Gemma around to Laura's flat out of a sense of pity? Yes. Nothing in it for you. What are you suggesting? Were you ever intimate with Laura? Well? Laura's devious. She uses whatever she can to get what she wants. The mother of your adopted child, very cosy. It wasn't like that. You exploited a 16-year-old girl who was desperate to see her child. She's my child, officer. Laura exploited me. She used sex to negotiate more time. But you were happy to take what was on offer. Well, conversation with Laura was particularly dull. Dave. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, understood. Thanks. We miss Laura. By the time we got round there, she cleared off. Right, Mr. Kelly. Have you any idea where Laura is now? I wouldn't be here if I knew that. I hope we can clear this up without your wife finding out about your little vices. Just bring her back. Yeah. Are you Ken Lawler? That's right. Do you own a red cavalier? Gary! Oh. 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 Take it easy! Oh. Come on! Calm down! Oh. Oh. Don't be stupid. You are, Steve. Yeah, I can manage. Right. Do yourself a favour and tell us where Gemma is. You told Rambo he can get off. You're going to behave yourself? All right. All right. I'll take a look round. OK. No more games, Ken. Where is she? I don't know what you're talking about. Why the struggle? Thought we'd come about your road tax. Where were you between 9 and 9.30 this morning? Look, there's something happened to the car. What makes you say that? Someone borrowed it last night. No car's parked around the back of the flat right now. You must have dropped it off then. Who? A bloke called Chris. Chris who? I don't know. I met him in the pub. That Chris. Average height, dark hair, last seen wearing jeans and t-shirt. Chris Bloggs, was it? You didn't tell me a second, though. You're not very good at this, are you? Whose toys are these? I like to keep my mind active. You're not thinking straight, are you, Ken? How's a court going to view this lack of cooperation? You must feel that pat on the back, can't you? catch of your career. It's not my career I'm thinking about. It's what kind of pervert swipes a two-year-old. A pervert? Now that'd help you sleep at night, wouldn't it? How about a nice little ride in a police car? Do you know Laura Evans? 
Can we infer from your silence that you do? At half past nine this morning, a security camera in Limassol Lane picked up your cavalier. I've already explained that. All right. So what are the odds that we come up with your mate, Chris? I think you've been stupid, haven't you, Ken? Allowing yourself to be coerced into an abduction simply to impress your girlfriend. I haven't been coerced into anything. Oh, you volunteered your services, did you? We know about the arrangement between Mr Kelly and Laura. Arrangement? We know that he took Jem around to Laura's flat. What, you think he took Jem around out of the goodness of his heart? I don't understand, Ken. Gemma playing in the kitchen while he's got his filthy hands all over Laura in the bedroom. Didn't you mention that bit? Are you Gemma's father? No. Then why get involved in something as desperate as this? Why take these risks? Because Laura's worth more than being treated like some sort of prostitute. When did you find out that she had a daughter? Sort of scar on her stomach. So she's, what, 16? And he's a dirty old man. That must have infuriated you. I told her she had to finish it. It was over, but she just couldn't. She says it's over. She doesn't see her daughter again. As long as he has Gemma, she can't win. She'd wake up crying. I'd put my arm around her, but she just turned her eyes. It was him, inside her head. She was crying for Gemma, being mauled by him. I just wanted to wipe that smile off his sweaty face. What, by taking Gemma? All Laura had to do was pick her daughter up. I was going to do the rest. So you steal your iron from the Riverside Flats and you park outside the newsagents? Laura just walked over to the pram. Picked Gemma up, came straight back to the car. She got in, slammed the door. Gemma's crying because she'd just been woken up. Laura says, drive. Couldn't have been easier. We were going to disappear. I was going to rent a place and get a job. Keep Gemma off the paperwork and away from prying eyes. Ken, it's in Laura's interests to clear this up now. You'll be in my flat later. Let them have today. Here we go. Right, if you take the near stairs, remember extreme caution, because she's not likely to give up Gemma without a struggle. Go. She's seen me, Gov. Ken! Come on. Ken! Laura, it's over. Let Gemma go. Laura, Ken's at the station. He told us about Kelly. We know he was using you. She's my baby. You can't take her. See her, Oscar, from this young Go ahead, go. Kill the sirens around Granby House. Receive. Don't put Gemma through this. Laura, Gemma's frightened. She doesn't understand what's happening. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Let's take her home, shall we? Nice one, Jamila. Good result. Boo. <laughs> 